All right, I'm standing here with Daryl Thompson, the artist extraordinaire and my older brother. He is the artist behind the uh, best-selling 12-inch, best-selling 12-inch of all time, ladies and gentlemen. This is the man, the legend, Daryl Thompson. He actually airbrushed the front cover 12-inch of Rumors, Vicious Rumors. Daryl, take us back uh, to 1986 or 1984. No, it was 1986. Take us back there, man, and uh, tell us how you came up with that concept of uh, the two women and, uh, uh, you know, like what was the whole process of that, man? How did you come up with that, that, great, that great artwork for the cover of Rumors? So I remember in 1984, right? It probably was 85, I think. But anyway, um, that was probably the third sketch of uh, other sketches. I actually had the female speaking into the ear of like a, a statue like David or something like that. Okay. She was whispering into the, the, the ear of a statue. Um, I remember revising it to another drawing. And then I had to really kind of think back. This is high school. This is kind of the song is about because you guys are still like at Berkeley High. Right. So, I was thinking more like high school walls, lockers, that type of thing. And, you know, at that time it was in the 80s, you know, and I was just doing the fly gear that the girls had, the little <laughs> colors and all that. All right. And the look, the 80s look. So that's how that came about. And uh, just really showing that, you know, when you're telling a rumor, you just you all up in somebody's ear. Right. You know, and then and just that, that, that facial expression of one young lady, her eyes almost bugged out like, ooh, this is some juicy stuff, you know? <laughs> so that's that's how the concept came, because that's how the song was. It was just some juicy stuff. It was funky. It had to, the album cover had to complement the song. And so it took me a, little, a minute, but that's how it came out. One thing, I wasn't totally finished with the album cover, but, you know, we had to get it out. We had to get it out. But, uh, so, hold on, hold on. I'm going to stop you right there. So, what we see, or what we saw on the cover of the 12 inch that actually was released, your artwork, are you saying that it wasn't finished? It wasn't finished. Wow. Now, that's big, ladies finished. and gentlemen, right there. It was, it was, so, uh, that, that, that cover was... <laughs> there were some mistakes on the cover <laughs> that... Yeah, yeah. So, so go into that. Tell us, tell us what had to be fixed that that wasn't. Well, if you look on uh, the eyeglasses, um, there was some white highlights that was on the glasses somewhere else throughout the picture, where it was uneven. And you know, me, I wanted perfect lines on it, mm -hmm. but those highlights were uneven because when I peeled off the the, the masking I was using. It peeled off some of the some of the ink, okay. and it left that unfinished look. And so, the funniest thing when the, the album covers for Club Noodle came out, the artist that they used, she copied all the mistakes. <laughs> oh, that's so just now I that's funny. Saw, when I first saw. <laughs> Love and Pain, I looked at it, I was like, I don't remember doing this. Life, Love and Pain, the album by yeah. Club Nouveau, yeah. Yeah, when I first saw that, I was like, that's my work, but, I mean, she copied, she copied it so tight to where she copied my mistakes. Wow. She didn't know they were mistakes. No one else knew they were mistakes. Wow. I'm the only one who knew they were mistakes. See, right there. But, uh, that that's that's what you get right here exclusively YouTube. <laughs> that's what you get, right? This is the real artist putting it down for you, telling you the real deal. Yeah, so, so when you look at it, you'll see certain details that you know only I know what they were. Right, right. That's but, interesting, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember, you know, I wrote the song. <laughs> right, <laughs> Ladies right. and gentlemen, this is Marcus Thompson. Uh, this is my big brother Daryl Thompson standing in front here right now. Uh, but did I give you any direction of? I don't remember telling you, D, paint, paint. I just said Actually, we needed Jay a cover, was, right? He came and said, man, we need an album cover. I remember you said it off the phone, but Jay was the one who was like, man, we need an album cover. Yeah, but I didn't want 
a photo of the group on the front of that 12 inch right because I was a big fan of Parliament Funkadelic album covers I mean we both were so I love the Overton Lloyd uh, uh, artistry you know of the the Funkadelic uh, Electric right, right. spanking of war babies, you know, right. all of that, man. He was the first one that showed me that. Yeah, so yeah. I said, man, if I'm gonna have a record out in the market, my brother is the tightest artist I know. He's got to do it. So that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you you don't see a picture of the actual group members uh, gracing the cover of the 12 inch. I made the decision that my brother should paint. Uh, uh, airbrush us a, uh, a, a tight cover so so with that you didn't really have any direction you just knew what the song sounded like I just, man I went to I went to, I knew what the song sounded like and I kind of had a vision of what it was gonna look like but not for sure I went to uh, went to Berkeley about a bunch of different postcards mm -hmm. of just different stuff that I thought might look cool on it mm -hmm. and just started sketching it and everything kind of came from that. Okay. Yeah. All right. The funny thing about that is, uh, you know, I, I knew I was going to have a whole big career of doing big album covers. <laughs> nice, big album covers, you know. Right. I was, I loved all the artwork that was on, like, Earth, Wind, and Fire, the album covers, how they opened up. And you see this big, all this colorful artwork. And, uh, and I just liked it all big. Mm -hmm. So I was such, I was so rebellious when CDs came out because it just shrunk the artwork back down. And I was so mad. I was like, especially when you couldn't even buy LPs no more. It was just CD, nothing but CD. I boycotted CD. I ain't buy my first CD. I don't, I don't, I don't think I bought a CD until 10 years after CDs came out. <laughs> wow. I was just like, you know, we grew up with records. Man. Right, we grew exactly. Up with vinyl. So I'm gonna show them a, a little bit of what you got going on right here. This is some of your work. It's a little MJ going on. Uh, that's also some of his work in here. And where we're at, ladies and gentlemen, we're downtown Oakland. What street is this, man? 14th, uh, 14th and Franklin on the corner of 14th and Franklin. 14th and Franklin. Uh, this is my brother's shop. It's called Oakland Inc. Okay, let's get that in there. Oakland Inc. And it's a tattoo shop. Daryl Thompson is still putting it down. And putting it down on the skin. 2013. Yes, okay, yes, still indeed. putting it down. OG. Come OG, OG in the game. Get some, get some artwork, get some tattoos, get some piercing. And just come get some flavor because we're putting it down. We put it down, uh, Oakland style. And uh, come check us out, First Fridays, anytime, we're here. Oh, and uh, you're right by Jeffries, right? Right underneath Jeffries. Okay, in cool. circle. Yes, sir. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the phone number here? Phone number here, as you can di call me direct on my cell, 510-882-2473, or call the shop number, which is 510 <laughs> Five three four seven five eight three. All right, cool. That's what the business is. Once again, this is Daryl Thompson, the originator, uh, the man oh, behind goodness. the man behind the artwork oh, of Timex yeah. Social Club, right here, ladies and gentlemen. I had to beat yeah. before this words even came. I had to beat for two years. I was bumping that. What? Hold on, there's some more coming out. What? What? I was bumping the beat for at least a year before the words even came out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I got to tell them, it, we wouldn't, okay, old school fans, I'm glad you're still watching. Here's a factoid right here. Factoid. You would never have heard rumors if it wasn't for Daryl. And because uh -oh. that is because Daryl was uh -oh. the person who uh -oh. gave the demo tape to our producer at the time. And uh, the next day, I got a phone call. And y'all know what happened next. We went into the 24 track, we dropped rumors, and it shot off like it, a rocket. It went number one, baby. <laughs> so, once again, I want to thank my, my big brother. 
Yeah, baby. For doing that, man. Love you, <laughs> Love you too, bro. But yeah, it's all his fault. <laughs> That's what I always tell him. It's all his fault. Everybody I gave the demo tape to, they never called me back. <laughs> how it works sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, you, yes. you up and coming artists out there, give all your family members all your family uh, a CD <laughs> or MP3. Because, uncle, uncle you know, yeah, you, you, you know, never know. They, know they could know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, and that's exactly. your big break right there. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. All right, y'all, I'm out. I'm Marcus T, OG Marcus Peace. T, with Peace an OG Daryl T, and uh, come down and visit him right here at Oakland, Inc., downtown Oak Town, and you now have a story, the real story, the true story behind the art of Timex Social Club. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. That's how we do that, bruh. <laughs>